So, the way this is set up, the rocket will be underneath and this will be the inlet from the heat riser of the rocket stove which will come so we'll, which will be shooting flue gases up and hitting the base of the first pan which would be the main evaporator pan and then they go around so hit the pan turn go around this baffle and underneath the second pan and then out through the flue and uh, the other thing I'm going to be doing is a lot the lower surface and the sides I'm going to be insulating with some homebrew uh, refractory low density refractory uh, to try and insulate and keep most of the heat uh, working on the pans rather than you know uh, radiating out the sides of the barrel um, one of the things I see a lot of people complaining about with the barrel stoves is how much heat is radiating off the barrel and burning their legs etc and uh, to me that's just heat that should be evaporating your uh, the water out of your sap that's in fact just radiating out inefficiently so I'd like to try and keep all the heat from the rocket burner hitting the pans and not, you know, waste it out the sides of the, the barrel. Well, I hope that'll work. I mean, I, I managed to deep fry with a rocket stove no problem, so it seems like we should be able at least to get one of the pans boiling, and uh, we'll see if we can get both of them boiling. Yeah, the main thing, this is supposed to, I want to be able to evaporate sap using small diameter material that I wouldn't use in my wood stove. So that's why I'm trying to use the rocket stove. Um, there's the pans and there's a chunk of futon frame that I'm going to turn into the stand. Uh, the only thing new that I've purchased so far is those two you know, stainless steel pans. Well, we built a stand. Um, you can see it's just that futon frame kind of chopped in half and then I took three of the smaller pieces of tubing to essentially make a table and then the bracing is all just metal uh, banding uh, strapping from uh, you know commercial shipping crates and uh, it, there's stuff you can find it everywhere like behind box stores you know whenever they get a shipment like especially like a hardware store They've got uh, just tons of it that to throw out, and it makes really nice bracing, as long as you you know make complementary braces because it's only strong in tension. But it's great; it makes a nice light brace for stuff like this. Um, and everything's just screwed together here with self-tapping screws, so I can disassemble it if I want to, if it's not working out. Um, yeah, so I'm pretty happy with the stand. Um, the uh, piece of uh, pipe sticking out the bottom there is going to be the inlet for the rocket stove. And then I've attached, uh, you can see, I've attached uh, elbow for the uh, flu, um, flu pipe. And uh, yeah, everything's assembled. It should be easy to disassemble. So this barrel formerly contained Vegalube Super P release, which is apparently coconut oil, canola oil, high oleic soybean, and or high oleic canola oil, um, something something, mineral oil, lecithin, soy lecithin. So that's kind of gross, but not actually uh, anything I'm worried about in terms of uh, contaminating my maple. You can, when I opened up this barrel, there was this huge lump of this yellow grease sort of sitting right there where all of that stuff is. And so that was interesting. But um, yeah, 
I paid a little bit more for this barrel because it was food grade. Um, just because, you know, I'm cooking food on it, so. And basically these are sort of three inch wide section, well more like two and a half I think, section adobe cob bricks with about 50% char added to the mix to increase the insulative qualities. And I've just sort of mortared them together to with, you know, regular mud mortar. And uh, now I'm going to add the feed tube and the heat riser and I'm going to use some insulating fire brick for the roof. And I also have a piece of split fire brick as the floor of the, um, the burn area just because I find the cob really gets chewed up by you know, the ends of the sticks and everything. So that'll just make it a little more durable while we're using it. So yeah, hopefully this will work. So I gotta um, obviously build the roof and then we're gonna start evaporating some sap. Okay, so basically I've got the riser tube set on there and then I put, I have this cut down piece of uh, well, it's an old chicken feeder actually that I used as an outer shell and then I filled in between there with uh, um, perlite and that's going to be the main insulation for the riser tube. Uh, you can obviously make riser tubes out of adobe. I just, you know, didn't have, I kind of didn't have time. So, and then this is sort of just a mock-up of the rest of the roof. Um, that's like an old charcoal starting chimney that I've sort of modified to be like the feed tube. And then there's three insulating fire brick that will be the roof. Um, and I've got it set up like that because I just really don't want to cut them or do anything to them for this temporary application. So I'm just going to... Uh... So there it is. A little bit of a dog's breakfast, but I am hopeful that it will work. So I'm going to light it up and see what happens. Well, it's lit and it is burning in the proper direction um, and the smoke seems relatively clean uh, we'll see if we can get it to boil there's still there was a little ice in the sap this morning so yeah, it's still cool. So it so it's just now getting almost to a boil, which is it's taken a while. This is I'm gonna have to play with it. I don't know. I'd like for it to get warmed up faster than it did, but it is just about boiling. So. That's good. So it's boiling. The other pan is still only up about 120, so I'm not sure. I guess this is an acceptable proof of concept, but I think I wanna see how fast I can push this boil and if I can get I mean, I would, yeah, so far so good. You can see the flue gases are really clean. So 
that's nice. Sorry about the wind noise. Okay, so you can see, you can get it up to a pretty good boil, but you can't really get the second pan uh, nearly as warm. And uh, it's actually kind of a bit of a fuss to keep this pan boiling at this rate. So I think I like the evaporator design, but I think you need a slightly larger diameter uh, rocket. This is a six inch. I, I think if I could do it over again, I would go to an eight inch and I, I think next year I'm gonna switch to an eight inch. I mean, you're not gonna get quite as efficient uh, use of the wood, but the rate at which you will you know, evaporate it off your maple, I think will be much faster just because you can shove more heat into the pans. So um, yeah, I think this works. I, I would say this is a good proof of concept, but I'm not, it's, it's a little bit too high maintenance. You know, it would be nicer to have like, uh, like a faster boil with a more, uh, putting more heat to the pans more quickly at, while sacrificing some heat up the flue because of the larger diameter, I think. Um, that's, that's my working theory right at the moment. But this does work and you can, and I'm gonna make this work for, you know, 2017.